Hey Tara, what you doing? Well, today I am going to do a dirty pour on this desk here. Um, I've got all my supplies. First off, I need my paints. So these are just old leftover Superior paints that we've had from their finishing jobs. Um, all the paints have been pre-mixed with distilled water so we can spray them so they're the perfect consistency for a dirty pour. Um, so I have uh, five different colors ranging from whites to grays to beiges to blacks. And then I've also added Modern Masters metallics as well. So I have a white metallic and a black metallic that I've mixed in a little bit of flow troll to it. And then basically these cups here have the paint already poured into them. And I've done layers of altering white with gray with black and metallic. And they're about, what is that, six ounces each? Yep. So now that I'm ready, it's time to start pouring. So I'm going to move this stuff off here and get them out of the way. Now, if you're doing this with old paint at home, I would recommend filtering the paint to make sure that you don't get any dried paint bits into your finished pour. Um, another thing that I have here is alcohol. So basically, to create cells, like circles, in the finish, you can use alcohol, just mist the surface. So we're going to go, this is the black one here, so I'm going to alternate this here. So these are where the black goes, and then the white and gray is in here. All right. So. Before you pour, always make sure that you have something on the floor. You don't want to get, because the paint's going to go everywhere. So make sure you protect your floors. Yeah, I saw you put paper down on the floor. Yeah, so it's protected. And what's on, on the cabinet? Well, because I've already refinished this cabinet in antique white and it's been sealed, I masked it off with a delicate tape and then we went through and used um, shrink wrap. Mm -hmm. I put that around the entire cabinet so if it pours over the side, at least my freshly painted surface will not get paint all over it. Right. So to start, what you want to do is aim for a center area, like so, and just start flipping the cups quickly. Whoop, got my finger in there. And like so. And let it drain for a little bit. And then I'm going to lift the cups up. And I'll let the excess go in the middle. And I'll get these ones over here. Okay. And Tara, did you level this out first? Yep. Yeah. I oh. made sure it was level. Our, our floor does have a bit of a tilt to it. So now it's time to start moving the paint. So I'm going to lift it up a little bit and get that paint moving. So I'm going to go a little bit this way. And once I feel it starting to pour over, then I'm going to go the opposite way. I am wearing gloves because it's going to start getting really messy. Could you just move this with your finger? Um, honestly, it doesn't really give you a nice finish if you use your finger. I like to use the finger for the edges, you know, to make sure the edges are all covered. And then I'm gonna tilt it back, or I'll tilt it forward first so you guys can see. Uh, maybe you give me a hand, right? We'll tilt it this way. I don't have any gloves on. <laughs> We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. And then all these void areas, you can pour a little bit more paint in there. And I do have backup paint as well. So I'm just going to add... A little bit of white in here, and a little bit of white in here, and a little bit of white in here. 
just in those areas where we didn't get much paint. Now I'm going to move the product. Even more. Move the product even more. You can see it flowing right along. Yeah. So this area definitely needs a little bit more and these edges here. So I'm just going to add just a tiny bit of paint over here, just on this one corner and a little bit here and a little bit here. And then the last of the paint, I'm just going to pour it along here just so I can get all the edges. And then I'll take my finger and just wipe the edge a little bit and just to blend it out like that. Just dab it a bit. And then I'll go along here dab this. That's looking really good. And then over here. Wow, isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, it definitely makes a interesting texture. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Now, Now's the point where you can decide if you want cells or not. Um, it'll create like little circles. So to show you, I'm going to stand fairly far back and I'm just going to do one spritz through the air. And you can see those cells. So I'll do another one just over on this side a bit. Whoops. There. Now it has more of a rock like appearance. And then just to touch up the back area here, I'm just going to run my finger along the back. Nobody sees the back of the furniture because it'll be against a wall. And then, you know, because it's such a thick pour, um, it's going to need quite a while to dry because um, it's so thick. Um, so we'll probably have to let this sit. Probably won't be ready until maybe a full 24 hours until maybe tomorrow I can check on it. And I'm just running my finger along the bottom just to tidy up the drips because you don't want them to dry as hard drips underneath the furniture. You want it to look nice and smooth. And I just went with neutral tones, but if you wanted to pop a color, you could definitely use like brighter colors. But for me personally, this is going in a space that it's more, um, more modern. Now I did notice one little area right here this has a little piece of dried paint. So what I can do is just grab a pair of tweezers and pull that off before it dries into the surface. Did you put any metallics in it, Tara? Yeah, I used um, Modern Masters Black Pearl, and then I also used Oyster as well. And they were just leftovers. I maybe had about half an ounce of each left in the container. So it'll just give it a slight shimmer. Okay, Tara, we've come to the end of this video and you've finished your dirty pour. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm so happy with how it came out. This was my first time actually doing a dirty pour on a large project like this. And for you at home, if you're thinking about doing a piece of furniture, um, I recommend doing tabletops. You know, if the table is badly damaged, this is a great way to disguise any imperfections. Um, it would look great on a coffee table, end tables, even a countertop would look beautiful. And I'm gonna apply five coats of sealer on it just so it's nice and protected. And then, you know, for you at home, you know, this would also look great as art on the walls. You know, like don't get rid of leftover paint. But what I do recommend is don't use a flimsy canvas because if you use a flimsy canvas, you'll end up getting cracks. We actually make these. They're um, solid, uh, flat canvases, and you actually added a chamfer on the edges to them so that the product can nicely flow over the edges. Yeah, and we pre-prime them. Yeah. It's actually MDF, so they come in a couple different sizes. They're available on our webpage, but mm. uh, they're a good solid surface and it's pre-primed, so um, if you're doing a little project like this and you want to do it as wall art, you could always order those, or you can make them yourself, but yeah. we, we do make them, you can order them online. I'm going to say a little bit about the top. Uh, it does take a long time to dry. Mm -hmm. It's, it, you know, I would say at least four days of just dry time and you want to make sure it's really good and dry before you do seal it to protect it but let it really cure up that's a big one you can also watch our video on how to make a resin top table and i think a resin application on this would be phenomenal you know it's a it's a really good um donor piece for for resin coating so if you haven't tried resin toe coating or you want to check out that video. It's quite long, but we cover all the steps in it to, to uh, everything from building a top, but you can skip through part of that and get to just the resin application part of it. And we cover all the steps of applying a resin coat. So this would be a good, a good case for that. We're just not gonna do that in this particular case. Tara's just gonna hand seal this, but um, just as a side note. So we hope you enjoyed this video and we hope we've inspired you to never throw out old paint and to try this technique. Yeah, and if you have any comments or questions, you know, leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you. And if you like our videos, please like and subscribe. We have a lot more videos coming. So bye-bye for now.